My name's Alan Hart and today we're going to do a full review and strip down of the ATAG heating technology boiler range. Always make sure you use a gas safe registered engineer when working on boilers. So first of all we'll start with the jig. So the jig on this has the expansion vessel built in. So with this jig all the pipes can go up the left and the right hand side. As you can see there there's loads of space for the pipes. So to take the expansion vessel out on this boiler you will probably need to take the boiler off the wall. You may be able to take it up the back if you if the flue goes sideways and you've got about you need about 370 mil space so that you can pull that expansion vessel out of the top. I believe that this is an 8 litre expansion vessel so it may be that you need to fit a bigger expansion vessel anyway. So you can get a remote expansion vessel kit so the boiler will connect straight back to the wall and then you can use this bracket with the strap with your existing expansion vessel. So by fitting the remote kit you can save about 90 mil from the depth of the boiler which will then make this boiler a cupboard fit boiler. So the depth of the boiler then will be about 265 mil so it's very small. Once you have the back jig on the wall the expansion vessel will connect on this connection at the front of the boiler making it very easy for the future. If you have any problems with sludge blocking this pipe, you can easily disconnect it and take it off and clean it out. Um, first of all, we unclip the top there and on the other side there. The whole case will come forward. For that, you'll notice on the case here, we actually earth the case. This is because the case has got a physical seal on and obviously it doesn't earth itself naturally through any screws or anything like that. Got somewhere safe. The case has been put somewhere safe. So the next thing you need to do is remove the silencer there on the air intake. It's on some velcro just here and that will physically lift up and off. That needs to go somewhere safe too. So we also need to disconnect two plugs from the fan. There's one, there's two. Undo the gas valve. Obviously this is normally tighter. I've done for the purpose of the video, I've loosened it with the spanners. The nut off the gas valve just comes straight off. So we need a 4mm Allen key. This 4mm Allen key um, can be used to pretty much dismantle, dismantle most of the boiler. Off like that. One. The buff turned inwards. Two. The bars slide forward. There's one. There's two. So now we need to gently slide the whole burner forward, taking it out with the fan. Like so. So it's an EBM fan, ceramic burner, and the burner may just need brushing if it's particular dirt or anything. This is a new boiler. Um, you also need to check um, on the back, removing this clip here, which I shall do in a minute. Um, but if you just want to have a look in the heat exchanger there, you'll see the tubes. So I've just unclipped this clip here, um, it's a flathead screwdriver, something in there just to pry it out. Gently remove the ceramic burner. Easy as that. Check the burner seal, make sure that's in good condition. It's also worth noting that when we remove these, these seals have to be replaced. So we're showing you a full strip down today of the actual burner. It only actually needs to be done every four years or if the actual flue gas analysis is out. Um, so every four years, these seals need changing. Um, this is brand spanking. To take the gas valve out, you've got two little caps that go into the top of the boiler there. And then you've got two 4mm Allen key connections. There's a plug on here, that side. And then what we do is undo these nuts. Now 
and then the gas valve will just pull out. Like that. So this this side of the gas valve doesn't have a nut on it. It's just on an O-ring. So if you see there, it's just got an O-ring. So to put that back in, you just push that back on there. And you tighten the screws back in top. And then we can just show you now um, putting the burner back in. So we'll just slide it in and connect it. So I'm just just pop the plugs back in into the front. And then just nip that up with the adjustable spanners. So should you need to take the plate out on this, there's one screw there, which again is a 4mm Allen key. And there's one screw there. So all you do is unto them two nuts. Lift it out, lift the diverter head off and then just slide the plate heat exchanger out just there. So this is a bit of a easier way to show it but you can just see there how easy they are to undo and then you can just lift them straight out. So the boiler's got a Grumfoss pump, it's a 1575. Cartridge inside the cartridge is brass, so it feels like a very good quality cartridge. That so the flow turbine on these is made by Honeywell. So the blow off on these is on the front of the boiler, it's also combined with the condensate, so you've no blow off to drill. And if ever you did need to take it out, if you have a lot there. There's just a clip, you just push that clip out. So the tails on the bottom of this boiler are telescopic, which means you can pull them up and down to go into your jig. So you see on that, that's got an o-ring on there. And then they just slide up and down that like o-ring. Also on the flow pipe. Telescopic. So again, it's just on an o-ring. We've also got a built-in filling loop on this boiler. So you've got your nickel plated steel pipes there and your brass configuration and I believe it's a copper pipe that's on the top of the pump. I hope this video was of some use. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video.